everyone welcome to another episode of ux because come on say it with me you matter in this episode i'm going to be talking about some questions uh that i got from my design family out there and i'm really hoping that's going to help you with your ux boot camp journey so let's get started with this question I was wondering if you have any tips or things you would have liked to have known before starting UX Academy. Yes, I do. I'm currently not working and I don't have any children. And so I initially thought that embarking in the full-time track was going to be the best fit for me. And in doing so, I expected to complete the program in three months. It's taking me almost six months now to complete the program. 2,000 years later. And here's why. UX Academy has its curriculum where every week the student is supposed to complete a series of readings and assignments. But here's the thing. The time that's allocated for you to complete the projects may not necessarily include the time that you'll need to redo those projects sometimes a second, third, fourth, fifth, I've even seen up to six times, depending on the project, depending on the mentor. And that will take additional time. So that's definitely something that I wish I would have known going into the program is not really setting myself up to think that I was going to be completing the program in three months. And also in addition, I will note, I've had to take two pauses because of COVID. I've talked to other students who've had this issue as well. Some just have a lot on their plate and they've also found it very difficult to juggle the program and life. That isn't to say that it's not impossible, it's absolutely possible. But um, I will definitely say that you should probably carve out extra time. So if you're a full-time student expecting to do 40 hours of work, I think realistically you're looking at more like 50 hours. Um, and if you're a part-time student looking to do 20 hours of work, honestly, I think you should set aside more like 30, even 35 hours. Um, just because of the fact, once again, you're going to be reading a lot, you're going to be um, doing projects, doing iterations, you have mentor calls, which is one time a week, you also have um group crit calls and so all of those things will take into consideration of your time that the design briefs are built there as a template now i'm not so sure how all the mentors approach this particular project there may be some that say that you have to stick with the design template but i've seen other students take those projects and kind of make it their own so instead of for example let's take mirror um, i've seen some students who didn't want the name of the company to be called mirror so they created their own name which meant that they created their own logo and style and it kind of made it look a little bit different from an insurance perspective I've seen some students create um, insurance for women only. I've seen some where they've created insurance for people with disabilities only. Uh, I'm really happy that I had a chance to work on site. Looking back, I wish that I would have done something a little bit different. Um, maybe it could have been something like teleportation or um, having a superpower. I don't know, something very creative like that. I didn't do that because I didn't know and so that put me in a position where not only did I have to learn UX design and create these projects and all of this stuff, I also had to learn the tools how to use them. All right, so get ready for some gem drops over here. Design Lab does offer a variety of courses, one of them being Photoshop. You can also learn Sketch 101. This course was very helpful to me. 
You will also be able to learn Figma and Adobe XD with these classes as well. And mind you, they are free. It is a seven day course that you can take every day of the week. They will send you an assignment and tidbits to learn. So this was design courses right there up at the top. His courses tend to be pretty long. So definitely get ready to sit down and just watch those videos. For anyone that's interested in Envision, they also have their own education portal with a large library of resources uh, and videos that you can watch. I did take this when I was learning Envision and I found it to be very helpful. The explainer videos were very easy to learn. The only downside is you will need to create an account, a username, password, and you may need to pay for Envision for the platform. Um, but the resources are still free. Another course that I took was Sketch Master. Uh, there are three levels of this course, uh, beginner, intermediate, and more advanced. I would recommend just getting the user in experience design in Sketch, which is that middle one. For $10 more, it's worth taking that class. And last but not least, Figma also has their own educational courses that you can take. There are so many lessons here and they're always updating this section. So whenever they have a new tool, a new feature, um, they are pretty good with keeping this area up to date. Some of them were very basic and minimal, like office supplies. My mentor really encouraged me to get post-its. And I ended up going to Walmart and I got tons of post-its in varieties of color because when you're building an affinity map or an empathy map, each color is supposed to represent every user that you interview. And so I, at one instance, I had to interview or I interviewed 10 people. So I had to go and get more colors for those individual people. I also did go to Target and I got a sketchbook. Now the first sketchbook I got was kind of just pretty cheap version with some, I just thought, you know, with a simple pen and paper, like that was gonna be good enough. But I ended up buying a second sketchbook, which was much more professional. And I'm happy to show it right here. This is a, my sketchbook, sorry, a coffee stain. <laughs> and what I like about this is that it's very thick paper. So if you use, I don't know, like colored um, markers or pens, um, which I use colored pens, um, it doesn't really seep through to the next page. And in addition, I also got some professional sketch pencils and um, erasers and things like that. Um, because that was also very helpful with shading and etc. But that was definitely an additional resource that um, I had to buy. With some of these design um, platforms, you do have to pay. So with Figma, it's free. And that's why I think a lot of students tend to just only use Figma because it does have a free version and Figma is great. I love that tool. Design Lab requires all their students to do is to build their own website, which is their portfolio. And this is where all of your capstone projects are going to live. And ideally, this is the place where when you do graduate from Design Lab, you're going to be showing that um, portfolio to recruiters and senior level designers and hopefully get a job. So there are a lot of costs that are related to having a website, of course. Um, you have hosting costs server costs. Um, if you decide to purchase a template, that's going to be a cost as well. There was a time frame where I also paid for Icons 8. Icons 8 is a website where if you're looking for an icon, uh, whether it be black and white or in color or wherever it may be, you are able to um, download those icons and then import them directly to your design. And in many cases, this can save you a lot of time while you're designing. So I paid a few months for that and now I have uh, lots of, uh, they call assets that I can download that are more higher quality because Icons 8, they do have free icons that you can download. Um, but depending on the size that you need the icon to be, um, if it's a small icon, then you can get the free version. But if it's going to be a large one, um, you are better off buying it because if you take the small icon and you make it larger, then it's going to be super pixelated. And last but not least, I also did get Adobe stock. 
This is a resource that Adobe has where you can download pictures, different types of fonts, um, illustrations, vector images, so, so many things. I'll throw a screenshot as to how much I paid for that. Um, it was definitely well worth it. I used this primarily when I was creating my site prototype because I was able to get some really great high quality images that I couldn't really find on the internet. Okay, let's face it. There are times when you're just gonna click with someone and times that you're not gonna click with them. And you know what? That's totally okay. Remember though, no mentor is perfect. There will be times where you'll have uh, maybe time conflict. Your mentor may not be giving you a, the feedback specifically that you're looking for, or you may want to present your work, but your mentor has not asked you to present. So make sure that you have the ability to communicate with your mentor that you may want to present your work um, in a specific way or have them ask you more questions. One way to tell that your mentor may not be the best fit for you is if issues start coming up that are impeding your work um, and overall just creating a negative learning experience. It is very important though that you have a knowledgeable and healthy relationship with your mentor. If you feel that there's ever a point that you can't really approach them, you can't ask questions, or they're not really encouraging you to grow um, or anything like that, definitely let your bootcamp school know and give them the feedback that you feel that they should know in the event that they're having the similar approach with their students. If after by the second or third call, you just don't feel like it's working out, I would suggest that you switch mentors earlier than later. You are paying for this course and so it's crucial that you get the full 60 minutes that Design Lab um, promises their students that they will get. The responsibility though is on you though. This is a two-way relationship. Make sure that you show up to the mentor calls on time. Make sure you have enough work to discuss. It would be helpful that if you have any specific questions in mind to jot those down before your call. If you do have any general topics that you're not too sure about, look online to find the best resource and ask your mentor if um, you need more information or knowledge on that specific topic. And in general, just try to take advantage of the time that you have with your mentor. It's a possibility that the school can pair you with a specific mentor you may have on, in mind. So go on the website, look up the mentors, read their bios and their backgrounds. This may take some time to do though, and put a request of maybe three to five mentors that you may be interested in. I say three to five mentors because every mentor has their own work, schedule, obligations, and just overall requirements that in the event that the first or second choice may not work through, you still have a third, fourth, fifth choice. So I really hope that this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you need clarification on any of the questions that I answered today. If you have any particular question, please send me a message on Instagram at ux.because.umatter. And I'll be sure to make a video and hopefully help you and other people who may be wondering the same thing. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will be over here continuing to sip my coffee and uh, until next time.